Hello, welcome to the Joe Cortez Show here in Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment and boxing capital, MMA capital of the world. So, Juanita, thank you for being on the show again today. And Shannon, it's a, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on these days, Juanita. Absolutely. So excited to have Shannon on the show here today. He's our friend, our brother, and Kevin and I had the opportunity to meet him in person at the Carlos Machado Spring Training Camp, Jiu-Jitsu Camp last weekend. That was amazing in Dallas. So very excited also about his upcoming fight, this boxing match that we're going to talk about a little bit later. But uh, just pleased to be here with you guys, Joe. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I tell you, it is always a, a pleasure being on this, uh, talking to the viewers out, out there in reference to what's going on in the world. And of course, I'll think it by helping the youth out there to get them on the right track. And uh, hopefully that uh, this show is kind of a show and information we want to give to our, our viewers and the parents and the youngsters out there watching. We want the best, nothing but the best for you. And I think that we're definitely on the right track to Juanita and uh, and uh, Mr. Oliver. I mean, just great, great pleasure having you on the show, Shannon. It'd be great. Let's talk a little bit about your career in sports, buddy? Well, you know, I started off in uh, high school wrestling, and then uh, and then that took me to uh, Muay Thai kickboxing, and then that eventually got me into Brazilian ju uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, and you know, I started MMA back in 1991, back when it was called No Holds Barred, No Holds Barred, No Real, No Rules, No Rounds, No Weight Classes, No Gloves, Bare Knuckles. So I uh, just been doing combat sports for the last 30 years, and uh, Really recently, in the last you know few years, I fall in love with boxing. Um, I always thought boxing was uh, was super hard, and you know the the footwork, the head movement, everything. And it's true. You have to really. You can't play boxing. You have to do boxing. Um, so yeah, man. The last the last few years has been a, a real learning curve for me to learn the sweet science of boxing. And, and definitely, with boxing, like you say. Boxing is uh, it's not a it's not a game. Boxing no. when the hurt. That's right. It's hurt, it's I, remember, I remember I was professional back in 1963 when I was 18 years of age, and I just started to. That's when I started getting into the sport, and it was really a blessing for me because I got involved with sports and boxing. To me, it kept me on the right track. So many youngsters in my neighborhood, they were drinking, they were doing drugs. They were in the gangs and all that. And I stayed away from all that. You know, I got into a gang for one day. And I thought that was it for me. And I got out right away. I was with one the boys of, I was the boys of New York and I continued fighting. And that's what kept me on the right track. Kept me doing the right things and uh, taught me a lot of discipline. My self-esteem, my confidence level all went up. All because of boxing. And I think if it wasn't for boxing, I don't know where I would be today. I've been blessed right. in so many ways. You know, with a beautiful family, and and I'm able to help out there with the, with the, in the community. I'm always trying to do something. That's why we need it. And um, Mr. Oliver, we all try to do things to get the youngsters. And the reason why we have you on the show with us today to help the youngsters out there. Well, I'm yeah. now I'm now training at Old School Box in downtown Phoenix on the Indian School in I-17, and Coach Heath. He, uh, he's got a youth program and, uh, you know, he's putting the kids in the USA boxing and getting them off the street. And, uh, you know, the, the gym is full with kids. So it's, it's really good to see that these kids have an opportunity to uh, get off the street and actually learn something, not even self-defense, but, uh, you know, self-motivation and just showing them that they can finish something, they can do something. So it's, it's really, it's really cool to see the kids come in. I was, uh, actually blessed enough to, uh, to meet you, Shannon, and it's been an honor. Um, you know, I've been following you for years. You've been doing this for a long time. I mean, good Lord, you've got more fights than anybody alive today. And the number keeps growing as far as what you're doing and competing and continuously doing. You're doing another event or another boxing event right now that's going to be an incredible thing. But uh, what is your number now? I know it was close to 300, but how many yeah. actually fight? Well, well, for MMA, professional MMA, I'm 237 fights. I'm 26 and three in bare knuckle boxing, and I'm 26 and four in, in Muay Thai and kickboxing. 
Um, uh, but bare knuckle is is my true love. I love bare knuckle boxing, and uh, I'm starting to love just professional boxing, regular boxing with the gloves. I call them the yeah. mittens, you know, put the mittens on. Um, and that and, and that leads me to this big, big, big training camp that I have, and I definitely want to thank you and uh, uh, StompFentanyl.com. You guys paid for my training camp. Um, me and my coach love it, man. We definitely appreciate you guys and everything. Getting your awareness out there, StopFentanyl.com. Um, yeah, man, and I'm just getting ready for my big fight in Qatar, June 8th, fighting uh, pay-per-view on a on a pretty big uh, boxing platform. It's going to be live on Fight TV. And I'm um, just really excited to get in there and go 10 rounds with uh, a former MMA fighter named Daryl Schoonover. Um, yeah, man, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm, in, I'm eight weeks into my camp, and I got five weeks left. And uh, I'm just doing two days. That, that's why I'm getting ready to go right now. I get ready to go back to the gym. <laughs> You, you're actually fighting heavyweight, but you're getting back in shape, losing weight, doing so. Not meaningful losing weight, right. but just getting back in shape. And, and it's a different breed when you're out there with gloves on, when you're getting it on. So you doing this, you've actually lost some weight. So now you went down a weight class, but you're still fighting heavyweight. How's that going yeah. to affect you going into the boxing ring? Well, I didn't really lose a, a, a different weight class. I'm still heavyweight. I was 240 pounds, kind of chunky, you know, just solid. And uh, yeah. in the last eight weeks, I've dropped 23 pounds. So, you know, I'm walking around 217, 220. Um, but by fight time, I'll be 225 when I walk into the ring. A small heavyweight. Uh, but, uh, yeah. you know, Tyson was a small heavyweight. You know, we're, we're small, yeah. but we're, we're, we're strong. You know what I mean? I hit hard. So Absolutely. it's going to be good. I'm in shape. Let's put it that way. And one more yeah. quick thing. Yeah. Turn it over to somebody else. I don't want to take over the podcast. But it is stoppingfentanyl.com. And we are so blessed to be able to uh, to help you in what you're doing. And we only pay the portion of it. There's a lot of things that goes through what you're doing and how you're doing it. So if anybody else out there can help you in any way, please reach out to me, reach out to Juanita or Joe, or actually if you can reach out to Shannon and help him in this journey, because it's very expensive to do what you do. You know, yeah, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people, yeah. it's expensive. I mean, that's a lot of people don't realize was seven hundred fifty dollars for three weeks. You've been doing yeah. it for a long time. You got more things going on. We still need a little help if anybody wants to get out there and help you. So if anybody yeah. can help him, yeah. believe me, he's a man that's incredible. Fights for awareness like you would not believe, yeah. and also fights big time. And the reason that me and you become friends like we did was you have a thing on suicide, on suicide, stopping suicides, which is one of the biggest killers in the world as well. So Absolutely. I was suicides.com as well but that's something that me and you hooked up on and made me yeah. so into you on what you was doing and started following okay and the, and what's more important is what you was doing on the on the suicides to me and that was something very very special to me i'm so proud to be what i'm doing to help you but uh what you do as a man is amazing and i appreciate you and i'm glad that i'm your friend i hope you continue the path and what you're doing and kick the shit out of somebody when yeah, this fight comes like yeah, I definitely appreciate it. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, fight camp is uh is very expensive. You know, I I um I'm a professional, so what I gotta do is I gotta pay guys that come in and do sparring with me. Uh they don't come in and spar for free. Um, and you know, they gotta pay the coach, you gotta pay the gym fees, you gotta pay, yeah. pay to get your 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 shorts made, your shirts made, you you gotta get shoes. Yeah. Um, I mean there there's and then you gotta get your medicals on top of that, you know, being fifty over the 50 year mark, you know, and I got to get a neurological exam. You got to get a physical, you got to get an eye test. You got to get HIV, hepatitis, A, B, and C. There's all these blood tests you got to do. So, uh, yeah, camps are expensive. It's not, it's not, you know, you've already got, you know, five grand, five to 10 grand actually put into it before you even go fight. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, well, if anybody can help him out, that would be a blessing to everybody. And it's a great cause. Joe? Hey Joe, was it was it expensive for you guys back in the day doing your fight camps? Well, let me tell you that uh, no, it wasn't that expensive. Now with, with the modern day uh, safety measures that they're using, they want yeah. the the fighters to get an uh, MRI. Yeah, you get all kinds of physicals. Yeah, they do the end of the testing, making yeah. sure you're not on any kind of steroid drugs. You know. There's so much test that goes on to the paint the gyms and the sparring and all that. Yeah, it all accumulates, you know, the the housing, the the meals and 
to and from the camp and all that. It's a, money, a lot of money involved. So that's the promoters sometimes. Yeah, a lot of sign up a fighter. The contract, you know, the state, you know, was included besides uh, your your paycheck. Right. And before you, sometimes your paycheck, your paycheck gets to be almost zero at the end of the day when you get to paying all your expenses. You got nothing left. Yeah. Very little, if anything. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people don't realize that. You know, they, they they think you make all this big money, and then you're like, "Well, I gotta pay my coach, I gotta pay my corner man, gotta pay the <laughs> cut man, I gotta you get you gotta pay everybody." <laughs> yeah, exactly, because you know, not everybody makes the kind of salary like the Mike Tyson and the Holyfield yeah. and all that. Yeah. They were making yeah. 20, 20, 40, 50 million dollars a yeah. fight. You, you don't get you get very very few fighters make that kind of money. That's right, you know, Mayweather. Yeah, uh, very few. Now, the, I was reading today where uh, uh, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia fight. They thought they were going to be making, you know, over uh, over fifty million dollars a piece. From what I understand, the pay per view wasn't that great, so that the numbers are going to be not as high as they yeah, thought but... it was going to, like over fifty million dollars a piece. And now they'd be lucky if they get twenty million dollars a piece. Yeah, it's still pretty so, good money. That, that's one that was on social media. But I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, yeah. Still pretty good money, though. Oh, yeah, not bad. <laughs> not bad, you know. If you a, go $20 million, not bad. Back yeah. in the day when Ali was fighting Joe Fraser, they were lucky if they're getting 2 or $3 million a piece, you know what I mean? Yeah, jeez, man. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Bro. Man, I didn't know you were in Vegas, Joe. I would have invited you. I, I had a movie premiere in Vegas last weekend on Sunday. If I did, if I would have had you come out. Michael Jai White, Frank Grillo, myself. We had this big movie premiere, and I, I didn't realize you are in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, I'm in Vegas. Can you tell us a little bit about that movie? Yeah, so it's an it's an action film. It's called MR9, featuring Frank Grillo and Michael Jai White. And uh, it's more like a 007, but it, it comes from Bangladesh. It's a it's a Bangladeshi and Special Forces uh, spy who uh, is now working with the United States CIA. Uh, so it's just an action film. But, yeah, it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun to make. So you're uh, a knockdown guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing acting too now, you know. So I've made 20 films already. I got about nine more coming up this summer. Um, this summer is gonna be big. I got about nine films coming up. Um, yeah, I love you know, I gotta gotta stop fighting sometime. So I want to cross over into the Hollywood acting role. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I, was, I was fortunate when I was a uh, when I was a uh, referee at Sylvester Stallone asked me to be uh help him out with the Rock by Ball movie, so I became a referee in that movie. And yeah. the same thing happened. With Eddie Murphy for the movie we did, uh, I Spy. Mm-hmm. And they went with Tony Bandera, Woody Harrison plays with a bone. And uh, one with Wesley Snipes, Undisputed. They were great movies, and I was honored, you know, to do that. But, you know, that's so far in between. I don't have, not, none of my resume can, can't compare to yours. You've done 20 movies. That's a lot, buddy. They were very I'm proud coming of up, you. man. I'm trying, trying to be the next Jason Statham. You know, I want to be an action star. Yeah, that was, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's always good to have plan in, in place when you be there forever. So you'll be you're planning ahead. I like I'm very proud of you for doing that. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, actually, I just signed with uh, Juanita. Juanita's uh, uh, an agent. She's uh, she's very connected into the movie world, and so Juanita, she uh, looked at my my resume and she she signed me. So now I'm uh, she's my agent. Yeah, incredible. Very pleased to be your agent, Shannon. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they, that's, that's good to have some, an agent, you know, to, to be able to book you and keep you going because, like I said before, once you, you reach a certain age in life, you have to say, yeah, you're going to stop. I'm a, look at Mike Tyson. Here he is, 58 years of age, and he's supposed to you know, give a little action in there. <laughs> With Jake Paul coming up, I think, I believe it's July 20th. Yep. And he get a, a nice paycheck for that. We just hope that, that he's uh, okay physically. Uh, mentally and prepare for this fight. You know, they, they, they'll do all kinds of tests on him to make sure he's capable of going into the ring. But my recommendation to Mike Tyson is stay in shape, uh, you know, get your physicals and making sure that when you go into that ring, you're 100% yeah. ready mentally and physically. That's right. Absolutely. I think the better shape you are, the more punches you can handle. <laughs> you're not in shape, you're yeah. just going to fall. Well, like you say, you know, you remind me of him where your body, your built and whatnot, you know, your way that you're at. 
you know, you came from 240 to 215. That's great. Because that means you get a little quicker. You yeah. Know? And, you, and then that's where Mike Tyson had he had a lot of a lot of quickness in him, yeah. a lot of quick company, you know. He was constantly moving and kept himself going. And that's what kept him in a in a good record that he was able to knock out these guys. The punches were coming so so fast from so many different angles. He had good uppercuts, he had good left hooks, right hand. Oh, left hook. you know, he, yeah. he was representing. But one of the fighters they had one of the best left hooks in the game was the great Joe Frazier. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Joe Frazier, absolutely. Joe Frazier had a great left hook. I remember when he put Muhammad Ali down in Madison Square Garden back in the early 60s. And uh, uh, not many fighters can put Muhammad Ali down, but he was one of the first to put him down with uh, with a left hook. So speed means a lot. I remember mm-hmm. refereeing Mike Tyson when he fought. Uh, I refereed Mike Tyson eight times, but I remember when he re- fought uh, Larry Holmes. He put Larry Holmes down. For the second time in the fight, and I decided not to even bother to count because I don't want to see Holmes get unnecessary punishment. But the job yeah, yeah. Of the is to protect the fighters, they can make sure they can come back another day. I don't want to see fighters take too much, but uh, I was glad to be able to referee what did, that what, fight quick as a heavyweight. Joe, what did you think of uh, the referee for that Ryan Garcia fight? What, what, what was going on with that ref? Well, you know, he's one of the best referees out there in, in boxing today. But you know, sometimes uh, things he's happen. Off, he might have had an off night, you know. But uh, he's done many, uh, many good fights, and uh, he's. Um, I don't. I don't know. I got to talk to him after the fight because I wanted to make sure that he was okay mentally because the media was really they ate him up. Him, they were really yeah. eating him alive, and I yeah. said, you know, because he's a colleague. I want to make sure that he doesn't feel that don't let that pressure get the best of you. Because we all make mistakes. We're not perfect. You know, that night he had an off night. And let's see what happens when he does the next couple of shows. And you can yeah. determine if he has it or if he doesn't have it. You know, difficult right. fight, very hard to referee. You know, and, and, that that fight, one, and that fight was a little different too because they both were hugging. I mean, they would not stop just hugging each other, man. Especially uh, Haney, who was uh, Haney was all over Ryan. Yeah, he 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 was holding, holding, holding. You know, you, holding is okay in boxing, as you know, because sometimes they're trying to tell you if you're a little hurt, you know, hold him a little bit, yeah. and then the referee will get you off. But then when there's an excessive holding, that's when it's now now that's that that commit that's a, a foul. Excessive right. holding, too much. You can't let a fighter hold that much. Okay, right. you know, you know, hurt, I gave him a little chance. But after that, the excessive holding got to stop. And that's what the referee yeah. got to get a strong warning. And that's a strong warning. And you start taking some points. And you see all, yeah. all the stop. Yeah, absolutely. Mr. Oliver, absolutely. Mr. Oliver, tell us about what's going on with you these days. Oh, just uh, basically the same old thing we do every day is awareness. Seems like I preach it uh, all day long. We're, uh, we're doing some things with uh, Andon's Blessings giving away cash debt money and stuff like that and having to mention stopping fentanyl.com, stopping gun violence and picking a number between one and 400. And I give them a hundred dollar cash app. Hundreds of people see it. Thousands of people see it actually hundreds of people play it every, every weekend. And uh, just little things like that to keep it in the back of their head of what we're trying to do. And that's just show awareness, you know, trying to keep, get everybody to get to, to the point that they can talk to their children openly about it because so many of them are talking to me about it saying, look, why don't can you explain to me why I need to speak to my children when I know they don't have a drug problem? And it's really simple. It's really, really simple. You know, China and um, the Mexican cartel are now bringing in drugs that are shaped just like a gummy bear. Mm-hmm. If a child sees it, they would think it is freaking candy. This is some of the awareness that we want everybody to understand. It's not the fact of them taking a drug or not taking a drug. Do you know how many people, thousands and thousands of our children are dying because they're taking something that they had no idea what it was or the strength of what it was. So it's a hundred times stronger than morphine, a hundred times stronger. And they're making it into the pill forms and getting them across the border. And the kids don't realize 
that it's well, a, you know, a, that, the kids actually, think they're the kids think they're taking a Percocet, you know, like yeah. for a, a lower back or something. They take a Percocet and it's laced with fentanyl and then that fentanyl killed them. I work on the border all the time. I'm down there with Sheriff Mark Lamb from now County. Sheriff, we go down there all the time. The fentanyl is coming across, but it's not just fentanyl drugs. It's like people think it's just a drug. No, it's prescription drugs that look exactly like the prescription drugs you get at the pharmacy. So you have to be so careful what you take. You think you're taking a Percocet, it may have fentanyl and it, it's going to kill you. Yeah. Same thing. It could be a Xanax. They think they're taking a Xanax. It's not. Absolutely. I had a call me that just died saying she took a Xanax. It's mm. not. It's coming across in different forms. Not Absolutely. only gummies, mm -hmm. Xanax, your 30s, all these other pain pills. So the awareness that we're speaking of is to teach our children not to take a dang thing from anybody. When you're right. out if the you're not getting it, look, it's going to be cool. It, Look, if you're not getting it from your doctor, from the American pharmacy, yeah. then you better not take it because you don't know yep. what you're taking. That's right. That's Plain right. And that's the, you know, and they, they want to reach out and say, why do I need to talk to them? That's why we want to talk to them so they understand. They're not, you know, they, most of these kids that are dying aren't realizing they're taking fentanyl. Yeah. Right. They're taking it to be cool because peer pressure is so big. Peer pressure is 100 times bigger today than it was 20 years ago, guys. When we was our kids, when we was children, Peer yeah. pressure, you just these dukes up and you got it. You know, peer pressure wasn't that big a deal. Now you got social media and all these things that are going on. Social media will break you in a second. When you have 500 people making fun of you in a minute, that's when the yeah. suicides and stuff comes in. That's what you fight so much for, and, uh, Shannon. So those are the, a lot of things that we're trying to get out there with awareness. You know, the stoppingsuicides.com, stoppingfentanyl.com is, is so important. Stoppinggunviolence.com, needless to say, but... The bottom line is, is awareness is so important, and that's what we're trying to push every day. So, yeah, and, it and, needs, you know, and it needs to start in the lower grades. You know, uh, junior yeah, high and high school is kind of already too late. You need to, you need to get that first, second, third yeah. graders. You need to you let do. those guys know right now. That's it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you know, you know. Can I say something? Uh, you know what's happening in the world today, with, uh, you know, with the wars and whatnot. China is is our enemy. So is Russia, and that, know. and you, know, and sometimes you don't have to go to war with, with them directly. At war with with rifles and go out there with tanks and kill each other. What they doing? They're killing us in a different way. They say we, we we're not losing any of our yep. people in China. You know, yes. every day we're killing hundreds of people every day with the fentanyl. That, that's the weapons that they're using right now against us. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Very true. Correct. Very true. You know, and it's a shame that it's happening because they found a way to say, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to go out to physically go out there and kill them. What we have to get the drugs into their territory, we'll kill them that way. And mm -hmm. that's what they're doing. Yeah. Hundreds of hundreds of, 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 of human beings every day here in the United States with the fentanyl drugs. You know, yeah. that, that's the way they doing it. To them, that's a smart way of doing it. That we, we eliminate hundreds and thousands of people. And, and the war... You lose so many. Here, they, they, we're losing a lot more with the, with the drugs. Well, the drugs, the thing is, is it's killing our the people that's going to fight for us. That's the age group that it's hitting, 18 to 49. It jumped three years this year. So instead of it being 18 to 46, the number one killer in the world between 18 and 46 is fentanyl. Now it's up to 49 yeah. in one year. So eight years, 18 to 49, the biggest killer in the world. Is fentanyl now from ages wow. 18 to 49. It's killing and killing and killing. Over 100,000 a year die from fentanyl. A death every seven minutes in the world. A death every seven minutes from fentanyl. That's the new thing. And it's getting closer to six minutes and 30 seconds. Every six and a half minutes, somebody dies from fentanyl overdose. So it's something we've got to get a hold of. We've got to have awareness. We've got to speak to our children. We've got to speak to our friends. we got to get them off the stuff. No matter the case, we got to be their friend. And we have to start working towards being sober. Yeah, absolutely. We have to find a way to stop the, the crossing through the borders. <laughs> they bring. It has to we, happen. Can you imagine the getaways? There's so many that get away. We can't even catch those. There's so much drugs coming into this country. They come from different. They come from South America. They come in from Canada. They come in from all over. I mean, we got to protect our borders to keep this from happening. Something's got to be done real soon, or we're going to lose all our 
Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, what I can say is that you, you viewers out there watching, your parents and your youngsters out there watching, keep your guards up at all times because they're going to get you. You know, no matter what, they're going to find a way to get you. So you got to be intelligent enough to know not to do any kind of drugs. What did you used to say, Joe? Protect yourself at all times. Keep your guards right. up, bro. And remember, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. <laughs> hey, that's good. <laughs> We have a few more affiliates that's joined our family uh, for the $150 to join up. And uh, one of them is a jujitsu gym in Pendleton named Trash Panda. I'm going to turn it over to you, Benita, so you can talk about it a little bit. Yes, yes, they came on board. Of course, we have Joe Mack also on board. He was our first Joe affiliate, Mack. our first member. So shout out to Joe Mack. Uh, we are so appreciative of you. And then, of course, now we have Kirsten and Puri joining us from Trash Panda. They are in the jiu-jitsu world. So we are looking for more affiliates, guys. We welcome Trash Panda to our program. And we are looking for more affiliates because this is what we do. We build communities. And uh, every single person in this room is out there building community in their area with the circle of people they know with their expertise. So if you want to hop on board, please make contact with myself or Kevin. And we are going to lock you right in into our program. There's amazing things coming. There's a lot of projects that we are going to be launching. I know Joe also mentioned that he has a cadet program. We have the gym coming up that Kevin and I are doing. And, and Shannon is a big part of that as well. So we are very excited for, for all our affiliates that are jumping on board. Uh, we have to build, guys. We have to build because we live in a society where everything is being break, broken down. It's morals and values are flying out the door. Um, kids are not having that uh, support from their parents like they used to. We need you to help us to build community. We need to build a solid foundation so that they can build upon that because they are, in essence, our future. And it's all about putting good vibes and good energy out there. And that's what every single person in this room and every guest that has been on the show, that's what they do. They're putting out good energy, good work, um, you know, training people, uplifting people, giving a word of encouragement. That is the best way to start the day for someone. So let's get uh, hooked in here. Let's get involved. Shout out also to Hector Camacho who was on here. He was one of our special guests. He's also a very important part of what we do. But yes, we are just yeah. very excited for all the developments. Over to you, Joe. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, you know, I'm glad that you're giving all that information out there because if, uh, if individuals out there are listening, what is the uh, the website? Give the website information so they know where to make the contact or telephone number or whatever. Can you give us that information? When Yes, we are still building our website, but our Facebook page will be streaming here at the top of this recording, as well as our email address. If you want to reach out to us uh, via email, if you want to be an, an affiliate with us, if you want to be on the show, or if you have questions that we can answer in one of our upcoming shows, please reach out to us either via the Facebook page or the email address, and we will be sure to answer we want to take hands with you. We want to partner with you because we are building something amazing and it's going to be something that is going to leave a legacy. Yeah, well, let me tell you that I have Shannon, Oliver, and yourself, Juanita, and the show myself, Joe Cortez. We're all trying to help out wherever we can. And I think this program that we're putting together is going to be fantastic. You know, the cadet program, which we've been talking about, the cadet program, have the youngsters start when they're 10 years old, get them on to a cadet program so they can learn the discipline. So, you know, to get them on the right track. Because a lot of these kids, they, a lot of kids come from single parent homes. And yeah. uh, and a lot of these kids, are, they, they, need, they need somebody to uh, to follow them. So, Some somebody. To, role models, yeah. Listen to. They had, so, some of these kids need a father image, you know? Yeah. And that's where we come in as a big brother. As a father yeah. figure for these kids, so they know that they're not by themselves. We care for them. And we want to get them on the right track. And little by little, I'm sure we'll get everybody on board to be doing the right things. Because, uh, you know, Shannon, you and I know in the gyms that we go to, a lot of these kids go there because they, they feel at home there, because they feel they need somebody. The trainers, is like they, they look up to these trainers. And that's Absolutely. good. Yeah. They, they, they learn the discipline 
they learn to listen to somebody to get them direction to have a self confidence too. You know, that, sure. that's what you build the self confidence. Absolutely, yeah. all that comes from training. But we need that's why the trainers out there. We thank our trainers that are out there. They're able to teach these kids. But I want to make sure that these trainers are doing the right things. I want to see a, if we can start a course, a program where we can train the trainers so they can get certified. Oh, yeah. Not, yeah. They're not, they're not only in boxing, but we know that we train these kids to be fighters, but how about how to be you know, good children and good adults growing up? So we got to guide them not only inside the ring, but outside the ring as well. Yeah. I look at it like, you know, a trainer is kind of like a life coach. You know, you, yeah. you you ask your trainer and your coach all the time. It's not just about boxing, but it's about life, you know. And if you have a good coach, a good trainer, you know, especially a, a fighter that's up and coming, you can tell them about investing them, uh, investing investing their um, their money, how to, how to have residual income, do, do something with so they're not just blowing their money, you know what I mean? I wish I had somebody like that when I first started my career 30 years ago. Um, but now, you know, I'm able to help younger guys and tell them, hey, you need to invest your money. This is what you need to do. Don't just go blow it, you know? Yeah. Absolutely, exactly. absolutely. Yeah, I, I was thinking as, uh, Shannon, you said something that made me chuckle when we talked about dropping the weight, uh, you know, or getting in shape for this fight. You said you're small, but you hit hard. It made me think of something that Mike Yoshi used to tell me. I'm small, but I hit hard. But talking about the dojos, guys, that is your second home. To my sure. children and I, when we trained, that was our second home. It still is. And that's the kind of feel, the kind of community we want. Because like Shannon mentioned, you don't just talk uh, boxing or martial arts with your trainer, your Kiyoshi or Anshi. Um, you talk life. And they yeah. impart so many other valuable lessons into your lives. Uh, principles that you can use, take from the dojo or the boxing ring. And apply them in life. So absolutely phenomenal impact that this project is going to have on, on the community. Right, right. Well, you know, Juanita, it's always so good to to have uh, guests on the show like Shannon and yourself and, and Kevin talking about the things that are going on in this world. There's so many things that we all need a little bit of help. Even some adults that are going through the difficult times. You know, this program... But don't 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 this program is not only for youngsters, this program is for everybody. Because yeah. there are adults out there that can have some mental issues because of what's going on in their life. As I, I look up to Kevin, who's gone through hell and back, and yet, you know, we're trying we're we keep we're keeping the whole family together. And one either you came into Kevin's life and I thank God for that. And uh, you know, I came into his life, Shannon now. And so many individuals the world what but Kevin Oliver has gone through with his two children. You know, he's, he's, he's had a tough time in life. So we, we try to give good advice, not only to the youngsters, but for the adults as well, because they need us as much as the kids need us, you know. We want to help them, keep them on the right track, and making sure they stay focused. And Mr. Oliver, you know, we love you dearly. You're very special. You mean the world to all of us. You know, what you've gone through, we don't wish that on our worst enemy. And we want the best for you. And I'm glad you're doing what you're doing to keep families together and keep these children alive. I, I have so many people. I get about 200 messages a day. And uh, so many people reaching out to me. And they're finally starting to get the message. I've been doing this for two years. And they're like, man, I, I just, I, I, all I think about it, I watch your program and I just think about my children and how I lost my child or I lost this person or my, even my best friend was lost. And they're like, I don't know how you do it. And there's a lot of people that will climb into a shell when something like this happens, go into deep depression to where with exactly. me, went to a shell for a while, man. I was ready to cash out for the first year. But this group of Andon's Blessings, which is StoppingGunViolence.com and StoppingFentanyl.com, those groups kept me sane enough to get me past the hump. If you can get past a year or two, you can, you can actually start looking forward to helping people instead of taking yourself out. I mean, yeah. there was many, many days that I didn't care if I woke up. I mean, and everybody that's lost a child will tell you the same thing. I can't even think anymore. It's a total different life now. And it is, it is a total different life, but if you can generate positive things to help talk to the people that are going through this, that's what's important. 
So the uh, awareness families that me and Juanita is getting ready to, to open up on a podcast. And it's simply for people that's lost somebody that wants to get on a program and talk about it. And we'll have some of those people on this program as well. You know, I mean, these programs that are out there today are saving lives. I know that mm-hmm. because I've had so many tell me, period, Kevin, you are the reason I'm alive today. And that makes me, that, that, I cry with them. I ball in tears with them. When, I, when they're on the cliff, I call it on the edge. And they're ready to kill themselves, and they're calling me, and they're crying, they're bawling. I'm sitting there crying with them. I mean, this happens for hours when you have somebody on the phone. I just got off the phone with somebody that was out in their car with a gun going to kill herself because they've got cancer and they can't get over the pain. These people are reaching out to me because of the suicides that I had that I'm helping with, the stoppingsuicides.com. And I'm talking to her, and guess what? You know, she's still here today. And I'm going to make another phone call with her when I hang up because I was supposed to call her earlier. But the thing is, is just keeping in contact with these people are changing lives. And that is why I'm still here today doing what I'm doing. And and I'm going to continue to grow. I'm going to grow with you, Joe, and everybody else that's on this platform, Juanita. And uh, and we're going to change lives. We're going to make miracles happen. Yeah, well, you know, I'm I'm glad that he's talking about that. Because sometimes we forget about these individuals out there that are going through the suicide moments. You're thinking about and people like yourself able to talk with them. If you can, you know, also pass pass my name out there to people. I like to talk to them as well. Because you know, if we can save a life, I, I don't mind talking on the phone with them directly. Oh, yeah. You know, it sure. means it means to me. I mean, I I've met people. I mean, I, I we've had a couple of uh, referees, boxing referees here in Las Vegas that have committed suicide. And for you that don't know, I can I can mention some names. Uh, one of them was a, was a up and coming young referee in Mitch Halpern. He was only 33 years of age when uh, who knows what, what was going on in his personal life. But uh, I had lunch with him one Friday. And then uh, two days later, I got a call. Joe, you know, Mitch Halpern just committed suicide. I couldn't believe it. And I'm having lunch with him two days before. And uh, on a Sunday, he committed suicide. It's been 20 years now. He would have been. By one of the top referees in boxing, he had referee Mike Tyson and uh, Ivana Holyfield was one of the biggest fights that he refereed. But he was refereeing some big name fighters on his way up. And he was only 33 years of age, and he he was already definitely on the right track. So you know, people like that, we I, we like to talk to and, and keep them thinking. You know, there is life, no matter how difficult it can be for you in life. There's always a way. Uh, it's always a way to keep going on the right track. And you know, uh, Kevin, what you've gone through. And I, I, when I when I heard that right off the way, right off the back, I said to myself, I'm going to be this guy's brother for life. I'm going to help this man out so we can do what we can to save lives out there. And, uh, yeah. you know, Juanita and Shannon, yourself, you know, we're out there. We meet so many people. We have so many negative things that are going up with individuals. Another referee that committed suicide was a referee named Richard Green. Richard Green was before Richard Steele and before Mills Lane. <laughs> Richard Green, another top referee in Las Vegas that committed suicide. And there was another one that I can't take off his name of offhand, but that was after Mitch Hopkins. So there's uh, three referees that I know of that committed suicide here in Las Vegas. So, you know, we have to watch out for one another and keep them on the right track and help out whoever we can. We're here for you. Our doors are always open. You know, here with Kevin, Juanita, Shannon, myself. You know, we're here to help you any way we can. And Juanita, one thing, I, got, I'm sorry, Joe, go ahead. I mean, I'm sorry, Shannon, go ahead. No, I was just going to say absolutely, man. Those words are inspirational right there, you know, and it's not the person that actually commits suicide because they're gone, they left. It's the people that they leave behind that have to deal with the, the aftermath. And yeah. uh, how to talk about it, how to feel about it, because you know, do you do you feel like it's your fault? Do you feel like you didn't do enough? Um, that those are the people that we need to talk to. Those are the ones that we need to definitely help. Yeah, because the hardest uh, thing to do, the hardest thing to for us to find, is a person that's going to commit suicide legitimately. Because guess what? Everybody that I've talked to that's lost a son or whatever age group to suicides, guess what they say? This is what they tell me. All of them have the same thing. They said, you know what? 
He came to me yesterday, the best mood I've ever seen him in in five years, the happiest time I've ever had. He was laughing. He was cracking up. He was letting me know how special I was, told me how much he loved me. He said, we had the best time in that day than we have in five years. And he went home that night and hung himself. All of them have the same thing to say. When when they kill themselves and they're not asking for attention, which is a lot of people that's looking for attention, and those people need help. But sure. for the ones that are the ones that are really ready to cash out, like I was, mm-hmm. I, I was already at my stuff. I was gone. I was I was gone. I, I that could care less. So I know what they're going through. I can feel every inch of it because she was like, look, he was telling me by and I didn't catch it. And there's little, little things that you can understand that because you go through it, you don't go through it, but you help so many people in suicide. You people call you, you, that's something that you fight for because you was getting bullied when you was a yeah. young child, you, you know, so you've went from that man to the, to the person right now that's had more fights than anybody alive today and God bless you for that. You have something to talk about to all these kids to bring up something so special that you've done when you was getting bullied. That will help so much for these people getting bullied. They're suicidal. I mean, they, they yeah. really are tired of getting picked on. So they can look at you and what you've done, and you're changing a lot of lives. So, you know, we're all doing it together. We all want to see some some change in lives and everybody's lives. And I, and I appreciate what you do. So it's just amazing what you do because we spend so much time doing this and people don't realize the amount of time you spend when you do what we do. Yeah, it's a it's journey. A like a so thank you for your time for that. Well, you, like you said earlier, man, you just save one person. It's worth it. You know what I mean? That one person changes your whole life. It's, it, it was all worth it. Absolutely. God bless you, brother. Yeah. Well, guys, I'm going to have to go. Joe, yeah. Joe, I appreciate your time and Juanita and uh, and you, That's Kevin. Um, in 30 minutes, I got to be in the gym. So my coach yes. is waiting on me. Um, I definitely appreciate you guys and uh, can't wait to get back on the show. We'll be a whole of you soon. God bless you. Thank you. Hey, Gabe, uh, viewers out there, I want to thank you so much for joining today. It was a very special uh, meeting today. Hopefully, any individuals out there that are going through any difficult time, we're here for you. So we want to keep you in our prayers, keep you strong, and we want to save lives. And you pray who who is out out there watching, you want to just join up. You look at the little banner on the top, you know how to reach us, and we'll be more than glad to have you be part of our beautiful family. Juanita? Going to continue to grow for sure. Juanita, do you have any closing statements? Just remember, I love you. Love you, honey. I just wanted to say thank you for a great session, guys. Remember, there's always hope. There's always tomorrow. And we are here uh, to assist you if you if you need help or if you need a word of encouragement. Joe, it is an honor to be a part of the show uh, with you, honey. Honor. I love you so much. Shannon, shout out to you, the Meticulous Moments uh, community and the man Meticulous Martial Arts Mastermind. We support you in your fight in Qatar, and we know it's going to have a great result. And just be blessed, everybody, and just see the silver lining around that dark cloud every day, and everything's going to be okay. Thank you. Thank you all for listening in on the show today. It's so nice to have everybody, all our viewers around the world watching. We're here for you guys. We want you to keep your cards up at all time, protect us at all time, and keep going forward and pay it forward. Yes, sir. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Goodbye. Bye-bye.